I'm Daniel Roth, the executive editor of LinkedIn. Today we have with us Sir Richard Branson, the first person on LinkedIn to cross the 1 million follower mark. To celebrate this achievement, Sir Richard has agreed to sit down with us and answer questions from LinkedIn members. The first question comes from Terry Price. A lot of success comes down to luck. What would you say are the luckiest points of your career? Well, I think he's right. I mean, I think you do need lucky breaks um, to be successful. You know, I've had a, 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 enormous amounts of luck. Um, you know, first of all, in my personal life, um, you know, I've, I've uh, done foolish things like trying to fly around the world in balloons or trying to break, you know, transatlantic uh, uh, boating records and so on. And I've ended up being, you know, pulled out of the sea five times by helicopters. Um, you know, in business, um, you know, there have been many moments. I mean, I've, you know, we, we, when we launched Virgin Atlantic, um, when I had a record company, people thought we were completely mad to go from, you know, having a record company um, to going into the airline business. And uh, my bank thought I was absolutely mad. And, and uh, when we arrived back from our inaugural flight, the bank manager was sitting on my doorstep and telling me that they were going to foreclose on the whole of the, the, whole of the Virgin uh, little, little Empire. And fortunately, over the weekend, um, I managed to scramble enough money together from various licensees we had around the world to, um, to get rid of that bank and move on to another bank. So, you know, to create a business, you've got to initially work day and night, weekends. It's really hard work. Um, but lots of people do that and, and do not succeed. And, and so those of us who have succeeded do need to say, you know, to, to, do need to thank our lucky stars for the, you know, the breakthroughs that, um, that got, us, got us to the top. Don Clayton asked, do you believe that women lead differently than men? You know, it, it really, in the end, it's, da it's down to individuals. I mean, what I would say is that I think, uh, you know, I would encourage companies to work really hard towards getting a sort of 50-50, uh, you know, w women on their board, even to the extent of encouraging politicians to actually change laws to force a situation where there's 50% women on boards. because. You know, in countries where they've done it, like Norway and Sweden and you know, Scandinavian countries, the companies seem to have benefited mm. from it. But anyway, in the meantime, all of us who own companies must try to increase the size of our boards just to try to make sure that we get more women on the boards. This question comes from Twitter, actually. If you lost it all, you lost everything, what would you do? What would be the first thing you would do to try to rebuild your success? Well, I think you have to define what success is. I mean, uh, to me, um, I've spent a lifetime creating things that I hope that hopefully I think can make a difference to other people's lives. Um, genuinely, I've never set about to sort of think of myself as a businessman. If I lost it all, um, uh, you know, I'm sure I'd want to carry on creating. Um, most of my time is now spent creating not-for-profit ventures like the Elders or the Carbon War Room or you know, Centre for Disease Control or you know, trying to protect species. Um, and that's where I get my main satisfaction from. And somehow, even if I didn't have any money, I would do my best to continue to do that. I think this is a really interesting one. Comes from Sugata Sanyal. How can I help you improve the world? I'm 63 and not looking for a job, but I would like my twilight years to be more meaningful to me, to my family, and to the society all around. Well, it's a fantastic offer. When we set up the Elders, which is headed up by Nelson Mandela and Kofi Annan and Archbishop Tutu, the idea of the Elders was to go into conflict regions and try to resolve conflicts. And they've done some stellar work. And in time, what we also want to do is set up elders on a local basis. And, you know, it's such a waste of, you know, people my age and other elders who've, who've retired, uh, you know, not to have the satisfaction of getting out there and um, making a difference in the world. And maybe, you know, he could actually get, get in touch with us and, um, and we can maybe experiment with him by maybe, you know, doing something locally in his area. And if it works there, maybe we, maybe we could we could um, you know spread spread it out around the world. 